Hey, 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 time for another out of this world story from our space. My fiance cheated on me with my best friend, forcing an open relationship. A little backstory. Me, 22 male, and my fiance, 22 female, have been together since we were both around 18. About eight months after we started dating, I introduced a friend of mine. Let's call her Trin. As my fiance didn't have many friends, Trin is bisexual and started taking a liking to my girlfriend. Initially, I encouraged them to spend time together, as at that point, my girlfriend expressed to me that she might be gay, and I just wanted her to be happy. But we were still together. About a month after they started talking, my girlfriend asked me what I felt about an open relationship, and stated that if that's what she wanted, she could go have one. But I would have no part of it, and we would be done. She cried and started apologizing and said to just forget she asked. I guess that should have been my red flag. She then asked if she could send Trin a provocative picture. I said, whatever, but no nudes. Clothing must be on, and even helped her pick one out. After a while, she stopped talking to her so much, and things were good. We have a two-year-old daughter, and I proposed. A few days ago, I was snooping through her phone and found some illicit photos of Trin and her saved Snapchat history. I scrolled all the way up and found messages between the two of them from around 2018. My fiance asking for nudes and asking if she could send full nudes to Trin. Some of these messages were dated on my birthday that year. My problem is, I told her no nudes, nothing like that, and she did it anyway. She keeps telling me that she thought I knew about it, but she knows I didn't. Even more disturbing, they went to Burning Man together, and Trin asked my fiancé if I knew about their plan B, which at this point I'm pretty sure was for the two of them to run off together, but then my fiancé got pregnant. I'm kind of at a loss here. My trust in women has never been high, but I just feel betrayed. I don't want to talk to her which is hard because we live in the same bedroom. She tried to initiate sex tonight, but I just don't want to touch or be near her. Any advice would be appreciated. Thank you. Ask her advice? You know how we roll. Cranach starts us off. Your fiance wanted to leave you after you declined the open relationship. She had already made a decision against you and the only reason why she stayed wasn't because she loved you, but only because she got pregnant. This might have changed since then for her, but for you, it is like it happened yesterday. You will never know if she stayed with you because she wanted to, or because Trin wasn't interested in being with a mother. Take some time for yourself now. If you are still in contact with Trin, then cut her out of your life. She betrayed you just as much as your girlfriend did. You better believe that they did more than just exchanging nudes. You don't plan a getaway with someone that you exchange nudes with. You plan that with someone that you are in a relationship with. It seems as if your girlfriend still opened the relationship, but just never told you about it. She cheated. Your girlfriend has to cut Trin out of her life as well if she wants to have any chance to stay with you and Snapchat has to be deleted as well. Spend time away from her and focus on your kid. Tell her that you take back the proposal since this changes everything and that you need time to think and process what she did. Then do that. Take all the time you need. Stay away from alcohol and drugs and find out what you want. Do you think that you can leave this behind? Can you deal with her cheating on you? Do you think that you have it in you to forgive her for lying to you for such a long time? Make sure that the kid won't suffer. Tell a friend or two what just happened and ask them for support. Next piece of advice from Erectus Megus Man. We have a two-year-old daughter and I proposed a few days ago. Never get a woman pregnant, then you're 20. Next, about a month after they started talking, my girlfriend asked me what I felt about an open relationship. And you're still with her after this red flag? Have you ever heard of birth control, condoms, the pill, etc? Look at the situation you're in now. Your future is 18 years of paying for that kid. My best advice? Grow up. One more quick piece of advice from SickRM. Get STD and DNA test to your daughter and your upcoming newborn. I'd put a cancel on any wedding plans also. Moving on to the next story. Cheating wife left family. Doesn't want anything. Hard to process. Don't know where to begin. On September 11th, 2021, my wife, married March 2016, just celebrated her fifth anniversary, went missing. 9 a.m. She said she was going to Target to get some toilet paper and some soda. 1.45 p.m. About four hours later, her phone was off. I began to get real concerned that she didn't return. 
She called me and said she went to a different target about an hour away and brought a coworker with her to have a girl's day. I was initially upset as we had plans as a family that day. 5.30 p.m. Wife texts me and says she will be at her coworker's house grilling food and having a girl's day and that she just needs a break from family life on her weekend off. September 12, 2021. Wife didn't show up, so I filed a missing persons report. I give information to the police and they return a few hours later. They inform me that her coworker was never with my wife and that she is probably with another man, likely infidelity involved. September 13th, 2021. 2 a.m. I couldn't sleep. Every negative thought coursed through my veins. I hate breaching security on devices, but I thought something bad happened to her. I thought everything from suicide, rape, trafficking, down to infidelity. I went on her email, and in the trash can was a deleted message to a background search service. I went to the website and looked at her search history. She looked up one person's name and paid to look at the background. Then I looked at her phone records and found the same phone number that called in regular intervals. Two months before the disappearance, my wife would come home from work, second shift, as a certified nursing assistant, and would normally appear at 10.40 p.m. at home like clockwork. Over time, she began to show up later. Not enough for me to notice at first, though. One night, she showed up at midnight. She said she was with co-workers in the parking lot just talking about the shift they just finished. Another time, she wanted to go to a church event about an hour away. They normally end around 10 p.m. I got a call from her at 1.30 a.m., and she said she just met a girl from the city and was talking to her and witnessing to her about her testimony. We are active Christians in our church. She made a suggestion to stay at a hotel with this girl, as she was worried about sleeping on the road. She made it home at about 3.30 a.m. Back to the phone records. Every time I grew a little suspicious about her absences, there was the same phone number calling her, ingoing or outgoing. The durations were usually about 30 to 50 minutes. Something did not sit well with me. So I called the number. It was about 4 a.m. He answered half asleep. I asked, Is blank there? Who is this? This is blank's husband. Can I talk to her? She's passed out drunk and can't really talk. What's going on? I proceeded to explain what was happening. He told me that my wife lied to him and she said she was divorced. She told him I cheated on her and left the kids and her abandoned. He told me she is on her way. She actually drove back, cars in my name, and met our pastors and me at our house. I had accountability with, or I was scared to rage at my cheating spouse. We talked about what happened. She did not have any remorse. She gaslighted me for having a relationship in my past that she was never able to forgive me for, occurred before we dated. We met several times that week, and I calmly tried to figure out why she did this. I decided to call this guy back. He told me what seemed to be the truth. They met on Facebook, dating in July. The same week we were active in a church outreach. Since they started talking, she would skip work and call in sick. She would pretend to go to work and spend time with this guy. He would drive an hour out of his way just to see her on her lunch or dinner breaks. I wanted the truth, but felt I couldn't get it out of her. I went on her Snapchat, didn't know she had one, and found photos saved I would never want anyone to see of their spouse. I saw photos of them, covered in a blanket, in bed together, timestamped September 11th at 11.30 a.m. There were other pictures of her grinding on him with clothes on, and numerous photos of them kissing and spending time together. The timestamps on these photos suggest they spend time together maybe once or twice a week, and the phone logs suggest he called her daily. She sent him a snap on August 5th of her stomach, in scrub uniform, with the text that read, I'm starting to grow, I'm getting scared. Since they started talking, my wife and kids and I went on family trips camping, went to the drive-in theaters, went out to eat, went shopping and everything seemed joyful without any disarray. And then I found out she had a secret life for two months, sleeping with another man. Also, she's been drinking and driving. She has video snaps of her smoking marijuana in my car that she drives. She just moved out after I tried to see if there's any way we could save the marriage. I naturally was so upset that I didn't want to, but I take vows seriously. And if something was wrong mentally with her, I would be willing to seek healing with her to uncover what happened in her. She decided to leave me and the kids. She wants her firearms, but I did not let her have them. She stated in counseling that she is scared of hurting us if she stays. Years of domestic abuse that was never reported on, her being the assailant. I haven't heard from her in days, and her employer keeps calling her wondering why she isn't showing up to work. It appears to me that she started a new life with this guy. I gave her the only thing she wanted, her social and birth certificate. 
She gave me the keys. We just financed a new truck, beginning of September, for her cleaning business that she was operating in the mornings. I am not working as I do the admin for her business, and I prepare taxes in the winter and spring. Right now, I am not working. I have two kids. We have a truck that is not affordable. She stated she wants nothing to do with her kids. There's virtually no daycare in our town that is available. I'm pretty certain divorce is imminent, but I can't stomach going to file the paperwork or how to start. I've been trying to process what seems like a nightmare. Let's see how the community reacts. Intelligent Summer Zero says, I'm so sorry you are going through this. That was honestly a tough read for me. Take time for yourself to grieve and tend to your trauma. Divorce papers can be filed at a later time. Sending prayers and love your way. Next up from You Ever Think Why. My heart breaks for you and your children. Take time to get yourself together. If you have to, move closer to your family if they can help you out. Get cash out of accounts she has access to before she empties them. Not business ones, of course. You think she is pregnant with this guy's baby? Deserting her kids with you just to have more with this guy? One last comment from Jin Koka. I'm so sorry to hear this. That's terrible. The fact that she has no remorse tells me there is no chance in reconciliation, even if you wanted to. Also, going behind your back for months means she has no respect for you, and if you do reconcile, the respect for you will only be lower. It's going to be tough. I hope your kids will deal with this as well. Good luck to you. On to the next story. I walked in on my husband making a video call while in bed naked. Not sure if I'm overreacting. I, female 29, am a nurse. I work long shifts and lately my work schedule has been busy. My husband, male 33, is currently unemployed so he spends more time at home than me. He does go out with friends often, especially at nighttime for beer or dinner. He only leaves the house when I'm home. Yesterday, I got off work at 10 p.m. I was supposed to stay until 12 p.m. but was able to go home early. I tried calling my husband but he didn't pick up. I got home and didn't find him in the kitchen or the couch like I usually do. I thought he was out of the house after I repeatedly shouted his name. I then walked into the bedroom and was stunned to see him in bed. At first he was shirtless and his lower half was covered in a blanket. He had his laptop in front of him and was making a video call. It was strange that he was in bed at 10 p.m. I asked what he was doing and he quickly shut his laptop, says he was talking to a friend of his, Dale, and didn't know I was home. For some reason he was moving in bed like he was looking for something. I asked why he ended the call before I could say hi to Dale, and he said that wasn't necessary. I asked why he was shirtless, and he complained about the weather being hot. I then discovered that he was fully naked, but his lower half was covered in his blanket, which seemed strange to me. He explained he was watching porn before he made the call with Dale, and was masturbating like usual, so no big deal. He changed the subject asking if I had dinner, and then said he didn't eat. I asked why, and he said he wasn't very hungry. I asked if he wanted to join me for dinner after I took a bath, and he said no, and that he needed to go out to smoke a cigarette. I went to the shower and got out while he was still out. I found his laptop on the nightstand and quickly checked his call log, but couldn't find Dale anywhere. In fact, the entire log was cleaned out. I was confused because he usually doesn't stay in bed naked unless I was with him. He doesn't usually video call Dale at times like this, and he usually doesn't clear his call history from his laptop. This is new, and I'm not sure if I'm overreacting or overthinking stuff. I asked why he cleared his call log and he took offense to me checking his laptop, as if he was hiding something. I need to see if I'm overreacting and whether I should forget about this whole thing, but to be honest, I couldn't help but lose sleep over this despite being exhausted. Let's get some reactions. First from Sarcastic Bench. This couldn't be more fishy if he claimed he was calling State Farm at 3 in the morning. Relevant Oven 2133 said, in fact, the entire log was cleaned out. He lied. The OP responds, Hey, I just got a chance to check on the comment and what you wrote caught my eye. This was my first reaction when I saw that he deleted the entire log, especially given the fact that he doesn't ever do this, so this is his first time doing it. He lets me use his laptop from time to time, but when I spoke to him, he got offended implying I shouldn't have snooped. Our final comment comes from the Operentis. Listen, he's lying. I'm going to put it bluntly because it seems like he's gaslighting you so you feel crazy, which you aren't. He was in bed at a strange time. You came home earlier than he expected. 
He was naked in bed, which is unlike him. He immediately ended the video call with his friend when you came in the room. For reference, if a friend was saying something inappropriate that I didn't want my girl to hear, I'd loudly say, Hey OP, I'm on a call with Dale. And Dale would know to shut up and keep it PG. He completely cleared his call history. I could keep going, but what more do you need, OP? I don't mean to sound harsh, but I did say that I'd be blunt. He's hiding something. And be prepared. He might try to switch up and tell you he was planning a surprise or some BS. But he was naked and looking for something under the sheets. He's hiding something that he never wants you to know about. Don't let him trick you. Trust your gut and tell him you're not buying his BS no matter how convincing his story is. Especially since he's had time to think and come up with a story. Thank you.